Jump forces and jump landings. When you jump, you exert a downward action force on the ground with your legs and the ground exerts a reaction force on you. That reaction force accelerates your body as you stretch your legs. You need to exert a force over some distance in order to gain speed to leave the ground, and the height of the jump depends on how much force you exert. The jump height also depends on the distance over which you apply that force, which we've been calling the push height. The average amount of force you exert on the ground is your weight times the jump magnification. Just to remind you, the jump magnification is the ratio of how high you jump to how far you push from crouch to takeoff. In this example, the jump magnification is four since the character jumps four times higher than the push. In that case, if the character's weight is 200 pounds, then the amount of force that they exert on the ground to do this big jump would be 800 pounds. Now you should remember that the jump magnification also affects the timing when we're pushing off the ground. The push time, the number of frames from crouch to takeoff, depends on this jump magnification. Specifically, the larger the jump magnification, the shorter the push time. This means that the physical strength of a character is reflected in the timing of the push, and as I said, that timing is set by the jump magnification. Suppose the character is a super, superhero with enormous strength like the Hulk. If that character is exerting a huge amount of force to jump an impressive height, then the timing when pushing on the ground needs to be very short. You can also understand this from the law of acceleration. If the character pushes with a very large force, then there's a very large acceleration, so the time that they're in contact with the ground is going to be very short. The landing in a jump is rather similar to the takeoff. In fact, it's basically the reverse of the takeoff. Instead of gaining speed, you lose speed and come to a stop. For the landing, there's a stop height similar to the push height for the takeoff. There's also a stop time for the landing similar to the push time for the takeoff. The stop time equals the push time multiplied by the ratio of the stop height to the push height. Now that sounds complicated, but it's uh, really not. Uh, here's an example. Let's say we push off for nine inches and the takeoff is in three frames. Now suppose the landing has a slightly deeper crouch of 12 inches so it will take longer than three frames to stop. In fact, when you work out the math, you find that the stop time is four frames. The math that we just saw is not as important as the concept that the landing should be consistent with the takeoff. If the stop height is short, then the timing of the landing is going to be quick. If instead the character goes into a deeper crouch on the landing, then the timing of the landing is longer. Finally, if the takeoff and landing have similar crouch poses, then they're going to have similar timing. The force exerted by the character on the landing is related to the force exerted on the takeoff. If the timing of the landing is similar to the timing of the takeoff, then the forces on landing are similar to the forces on takeoff. If the landing has a quicker timing, then the landing force is larger. And if the landing has a slower timing, the landing force is smaller. To reduce the force of impact on landing, a character would go into a deeper crouch with a longer landing time. For an exceptional jump, 
such as the human cannonball, the performer lands in a net. The net reduces the force of impact on landing by extending the time of impact. In other words, by increasing the stop time. This requires a large stop height, so the net is flexible, which allows the performer to travel a significant distance before they come to a stop. Now you may notice that for these kinds of extreme jumps, the performer landing in a net will try to land on her back. Here you see that the performer in the air does a maneuver to rotate the body so that she lands with her back to the net. Now there's a good reason for this turning maneuver. Without the turn, the performer would land head first into the net, and this may cause serious injury. On the other hand, the human body can withstand very high decelerations, over 20 Gs, if the deceleration happens to be through the back, as opposed to vertically through the length of the body. In this shot from Mr. Peabody and Sherman, you see Mr. Peabody executing this turning maneuver in midair to land on his back. The other two characters, Penny and Sherman, are not expert acrobats, so they land face first. Let's take a look at that shot. And one more time. In summary, the force exerted when jumping is the weight of the character times the jump magnification. The physical strength of a character jumping is reflected in the timing of the jump. A large force leads to a large acceleration and a quick takeoff. The landing is essentially the reverse of the takeoff. Timing of the landing is linked to timing of the takeoff and the stop to push height ratio. Increasing the stop height increases the stop time. The force of impact on landing is reduced by extending the stop height, which also increases the stop time. You also saw some of the acrobatic motion that can occur in a jump. And we'll see more about that in some of the other videos. See you then.